Welcome to a special edition college football video here. It is week seven and we are into the peak time of the football calendar. Got a lot of great matchups this week and a lot of midweek games. Um, you can check out our Saturday slate breakdown where we talk about all the primetime games on this slate. I'm riding solo here. Wanted to give you guys some coverage, some extra coverage of these midweek games. And I also have a best bets article up on the site so you can check that out for me. More content there, but we will talk through some of these matchups and some of the bets that I've placed on these midweek games. Let's start on Thursday. Going to be West Virginia at Houston. Houston, new to the Big 12 this season, and I've been incredibly unimpressed. Um, one of the big things I'm looking for around this time of year is gaps in strength of schedule. West Virginia is 4-1, and one, despite playing the 16th toughest schedule by ESPN FPI to this point. Houston, 86 toughest, and they are 2-3. and three. Look at Houston. They have two wins, but not super impressive wins. They beat UTSA, but they, UTSA had a post-game win expectancy of 78%. And they beat the same Houston State team who simply can't score. The same Houston is 0-5. They have an average of 10 points a game. So Houston has had a lot of issues on offense. They've missed Clayton Toon and Tank Dell both of whom are in the NFL now, kind of tearing it up, especially Tank Dell. Clinton Toon backing up Josh Dobbs out in Arizona, and Tank Dell tearing it up for the Texans. But Donovan Smith, Texas Tech transfer quarterback, hasn't been the same. And it doesn't help that his receivers have 13 drops, which ranks third in the Power Five. But this passing offense just isn't functioning at a high level right now, and I don't really see that changing. West Virginia's defense is outstanding across the board. Elite cornerback duo with Beanie Bishop and Malachi Ruffin – Lost some guys on the front line, but they seem to have re retooled pretty well, despite losing some guys to the NFL. Top 25 in EPA and success rate allowed on the ground. So I think it's going to be tough for Houston to score here. And then West Virginia, I think they're going to be able to run the ball against this Houston defense. Houston, 107th in rushing EPA allowed and 97th in tackling, according to PFF's metrics. West Virginia has quarterback Garrett Green, Running back C.J. Donaldson, those are the two guys who are going to be able to really move the ball on the ground against this Houston defense. But I get the West Virginia's on the road. I get the Houston's kind of a buy-low team right now. They're trendy. The market seems to be backing them a little bit. But I like this West Virginia team, man. I think they're the third-best team in the Big 12 right now, which isn't saying much. And you could make the case for Kansas, too, as well. But I like this West Virginia defense. I think they're playing at a very high level, and... I like the coaching job that Neil Brown's doing. And I think Dana Holgerson at Houston is maybe one foot out the door right now. Hard to know what this is, that situation is, but feels like his seat is heating up. I like West Virginia to get the road win here and move to 5-1. and one. SMU at East Carolina. Next game will hit here. Two teams from the American Athletic Conference. SMU sits at 3-2. and two. A couple of interesting results for them this season. And a team that's pretty talented across the board. Um... I like Preston Stone. He hasn't been that efficient yet, replacing Tanner Mordecai, who went to Wisconsin. But this is a matchup where he should have a lot of success. East Carolina lost almost their entire secondary from last season. 112th in passing EPA per play allowed. Uh, the run defense has been pretty good. Top 15 in EPA and success rate. But you look at this East Carolina offense. Uh, it's been absolutely horrible. They lost Holton Ehlers and Keaton Mitchell from last season, their top quarterback and running back. And as a result, they are near dead worst in basically every metric on offense, uh, especially especially passing the ball. So, going to be tough for them to score here. Question is, can their defense do enough to slow down SMU? And kind of think they can. Looking at a total of 49.5, I lean the under. I lean East Carolina to cover. Not enough there for me to really make either play official, though. Um lean those two ways, but there's better games on the board to bet for me. So that'll take us over to Friday, where we have a few great games to break down. Starting with two winning against Memphis, and I had the matchup preview for this one on the site. You can check that out. Uh, it's going to be a really exciting matchup, in my opinion. And American Athletic Conference, two lane, went from 2-10 and ten to winning the conference last season. They're kind of the class of the conference right now. Um, but they haven't won at Memphis since 1998. And this Memphis team, flying under the radar a little bit, but I think they've been really good. And especially Seth Hennigan, really efficient. Junior wideout Rock Taylor breaking out. Uh, in the narrow loss to Missouri, he had 143 yards against that SEC defense. Comeback winner for Boise, he had over 100 yards and a touchdown. And I think this two-lane defense is 
potentially a bit worse than they've looked so far this season. We're going to find out pretty soon. Uh, they've returned just three starters in that end, and they lost their defensive coordinator from last season. He's now the co-defensive coordinator at Oregon. Hired in Shio Wood, former Troy defensive coordinator, who did a good job over there at Troy. And I, I don't have huge concerns about it, but I think as we see them start to play some better competition, could be some issues in that end for them. Uh, so Seth Hennigan, I think, could have a pretty good game here. Tulane, on the other hand, they're going to be entirely reliant on Michael Pratt. Uh, if you guys know, Tajay Spears, Tulane's running back last year, was absolutely outstanding. Uh, he's making plays for the Titans now, really breaking into their lineup and just a super dynamic player. All their big games last season, he was a huge part of. That's gone. They're 129th in EPA per play on rushing the season. Memphis, awesome run defense. 31st in rushing APA allowed. Held Boise State's Ashton Genty, one of the most dynamic runners in the country, to just 82 yards and 23 carries, 3.6 yards of pop. Going to be difficult for Tulane to run the ball in this matchup, in my opinion. So, going to come down to Michael Pratt. And Michael Pratt is an awesome quarterback. We've seen for the last couple of years now, he's really, really talented player and really good at processing, able to make quick decisions and... This is going to be a challenge for the Memphis pass defense. But this Memphis pass defense, man, they've improved a lot. Matt Barnes, defense coordinator in his second season, previously with Ohio State. And Memphis now, after ranking outside the top 100 in both EPA per play and success rate against the pass last season, they're not top 25 in both. Much improved pass defense overall. And I like Memphis here. I'm going to bet Memphis plus four and a half, if you didn't figure that out yet. Uh, there was a three and a half. I bet it a three and a half, to be entirely honest with you. Didn't expect it to move this direction. But hey, you can get better value now. And I like the plus four and a half just the same. Um, I think there's a decent chance Memphis wins this game outright, to be honest. This is the biggest game of the Ryan Silverfield era as the head coach. And he's treating it as such. He bought 2,500 tickets and gave them away for free to students. Really, really encouraging the crowd to come out for this one. And I think they will. Both teams coming off the bye weeks. Massive, massive game with... Potential conference championship implications. And I like the home dog here. I think Memphis recovers. Maybe even wins outright. So, move on to a game that's a bit less confident for me. Fresno State at Utah State. Fresno State, we faded last week. Took Wyoming plus six in that matchup. Cool little primetime game on Fox. Uh, Mountain West. Mountain West has some quality teams this season, man. I, I'm enjoying this conference. But, you look at Fresno State. They lost Mikey Keene, their quarterback. He was in a walking bit at, pa at practice. Won't be playing here. So Logan Fife is the guy. He's the next man up. Played some last week against Wyoming uh, after Mikey Keene got hurt. Had an awesome touchdown throw in that game if you want to look that up on Twitter or something. Really, really cool throw. But last season, six interceptions to just two touchdowns. Not as good as Mikey Keene for sure. I mean, you saw when um, Jake Hayner went out last season, Fresno was not quite the same. So it's going to be some of a drop-off. But how much is the real question? And it's hard to know. Um... Look at Utah State. Their offense has been quietly really, really good. Uh, they have the eighth most 20-plus yard plays on the season. Really explosive offense. Three running backs that have over 200 yards. And Cooper Lagos is kind of dealing right now. Um, last couple weeks, some really impressive numbers. Led the comeback win over Colorado State last week. Four touchdowns in that game. Uh, over the rest of the game, started really slow. Two of nine passing for 21 yards and two interceptions. And then the rest of the way, he was... Just unstoppable. 17 to 20 passing, 366 yards, and four touchdowns against a Colorado State team that I'm, I'm decently high on. So that was an impressive showing for me. Utah State actually ranks 38th in offensive EPA, despite having to face two really good defenses this year in Iowa and Air Force. And this Utah State team, they can't really get a pass rush, but they rank 18th in PFF coverage grade. Ultimately for me, I, I lean Utah State to cover. There's just so much uncertainty with these quarterbacks. It, it's a pass for me. If you want to bet Utah State, I don't mind it. I actually do like Utah State's money line as a round-robin piece if you're into that. If you're the kind of person that places a round-robin on a college football Saturday, maybe get it started with Utah State's money line on Friday night. That's probably the best way to approach this game. Last game we're going to hit here is Stanford at Colorado. A little Pac-12 matchup on ESPN. And he had another nationally televised game for Colorado in the Deion Sanders era. Man, this team just must be running on fumes at this point. Every single game has been a massive spectacle and on national TV. And it's been a huge deal. Like, got to be happy for this program and their fans. But at a certain point, these guys are just going to get exhausted. And we started to see it last week against an Arizona State team that 
It really isn't that great. It brought in a lot of transfers, and I like Kenny Dillingham, their new head coach, former offensive coordinator for Arizona State, but not a team that they should be struggling to beat if they're as good as people say they are. Um, here we have Stanford catching 12, 11 and a half points on the road. I like Stanford here, um, believe it or not. I actually have a Stanford win total under three and a half ticket that I'm waiting to cash and feel pretty good about at this point, but this is a good spot for the Stanford team. Coming off a of bye week and week before that, they got blown out by Oregon. Big deal, so did Colorado. Um, point being, they're very well rested. And they're coming into this matchup against the Colorado team, like I talked about, really gassed. And not only that, but Troy Taylor, I think, is a good head coach. Uh, hasn't been a pretty start. He lost to his former team in Sacramento State. Kind of an embarrassing loss there. But he had a 30-8 and record in three seasons at Sacramento State. And he's put together a good staff here, especially with defensive coordinator Bobby April, who I really like. Uh, highly respected former positional coach at Wisconsin. I think he's going to have a really strong game plan for Shadur Sanders here. And this Colorado team, they just have so many warts. They can't really run the ball effectively. Their defense has been bad at times, and their special teams hasn't been good either. They're 126 in the special teams rating for PFF. Um, Colorado playing at UCLA next week. Bit of a look-ahead spot here against Stanford. Could get caught napping here. I mean, obviously, it's nationally televised at home. Probably going to be a good atmosphere again, but... I like this Stanford team to keep things interesting, um, and it's mostly just a situational play. The Stanford team hasn't really shown a ton to get you excited, but one player I will say to look out for, tight end Benjamin Urasek for Stanford, potential NFL player, and Stanford's produced some great NFL tight ends, of course, so could be the next in line there, but I do like Stanford plus 12 in that matchup. So I'm going to do a quick recap of my official bets on these midweek games. Going to be West Virginia, minus 2.5. SMU at East Carolina is a pass. Tulane at Memphis. I like Memphis plus four and a half. I bet plus three and a half, but you can get a plus four and a half now. Fresno State at Utah State. I would like the Utah State money line. Just kind of a variance play. Put that in a round robin, a little parlay, however you want to use it. Um, some fun there. And then Stanford plus 12. That's going to keep dropping, I think, but I would play that all the way down to plus 10, being a pretty key number there. So. That'll do it for me. Hope you guys enjoy these midweek college football games. And be sure to check out our Saturday primetime, Saturday slate breakdown, where we talk about all the big matchups coming up this week. And we will see you in another video very soon.